think a lot of you um, I know from the Shell Club or the Shell Shows or even online. So I took a picture of our decor that we see when you're looking in the keys. So this is myself and my family, which most of you know, myself, Amanda, Dominic, who's 14 and towers over me at six foot tall, and Olivia, who's nine, and Nicholas, who's eight. This picture, as you can tell, was taken in 2020 because we all have our masks on at the southernmost point in Key West when we were there in September. So as Karen had said, we moved from Ohio to Florida in 2014. And as you can see, from coats to flip-flops and fake snow. So they've really enjoyed the transition from the cold to the warm uh, and being in Florida. So we didn't know anything about shells moving here. We had no idea. We did go to the beach quite often, but shells were brand new to us. So we had been following Pam online. I love shells or I love shelling. And we saw a first wash up of shells in 2016 on Sanibel. And I kid you not, we went sometimes twice a day and definitely every day for at least a week to try to see what we could find. At first we were rescuing. So we went along and all of the sea urchins that we found that were alive or the fish that we found that were still living, the kids were like kind of tossing them back with their little shovels into the water and seeing how, what we could rescue. And then it got to the point where we just wanting to see what we could find down there. We were very interested in all of the neat stuff washing up. So that really sparked our interest in shelling. We went online, signed up for different groups. I ended up creating a group called Shelling Mama and we saw that people were going down to the Keys and finding things. So in 2017, we took our first trip to the Keys, beautiful scenery, gorgeous water. We didn't find anything. I was so disappointed. I mean, it's gorgeous there. And we had such a great time. You can see the, the bridges that they were on and we got in that water and we looked all over and, and we couldn't find a thing. This particular location is um, the Bahia Honda State Park. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to mention that Bahia Honda is uh, very protected. The state parks in Florida are protected. So even if we had found an empty Queen Conch, we still would not have been able to take that with us. Um, they have signs posted in the park itself, right on the beaches that you can't take alive or dead, the Queen Conch obviously, and the cushion starfish or any shells basically. So had we found anything, we probably wouldn't have been able to take it anyway. So it was probably good that my heart wasn't broken to not be able to take anything. In 2018, we finally got some intel on where to go. A friend of mine online, Paul Jones, um, he had posted some things that he was finding in the Middle Keys. Typically, I had been going down to Key West. My family has a timeshare there and we had gone down even before we started, we moved to Florida, we had been going down about every year to the Keys. And since we had been starting to be interested in shells, still didn't find much there. Paul Jones decided um, to post the things that he had found online. And I was very excited to see some places to go try out. October of 2018, my whole family was heading down to Key West for our vacation and my dad who came in from Ohio and his wife decided to take the little two straight to Key West. And Dominic and I had a day to ourselves and we stopped, we left really early and we stopped in the middle keys um, near marathon and we shelled all day. And this is what it looked like. As you can see, as far as you go out where it's dark is as far as you can walk out without having to get wet, maybe up to your knees max. And so it's really neat to see what the environment looks like there and the water because it's so shallow and you can find a lot of neat things in those rocks. So there's Dominic on the right. He was my partner in crime that day and he's got his bucket and I think a buoy that he had found. And so this was our first exciting time finding anything. And here's some pictures from that first day of what we found. We were through the, through the moon. We were so excited. So uh, the first one on the left here is a Janthina. Uh, bright purple. The middle ones are the juvenile queen conchs, and I think we call them the rollers because they don't have their lip yet. And on the upper right is a giant ton shell, and on the bottom right is a milk conch. 
So these are things that we didn't find on the West Coast. And I was really excited to see something new and different. Uh, these were all empty and most of them were washed up on the beach. I didn't even have to go into the water to find them. More of the queen conchs were in the water. As you can see, they had moss growing on them, but I think there had been some sort of a storm in October of 18 down there that was still washing up things on the beach. So it was pretty productive. And so I went out when we got to Key West for our hotel and I got a bucket and I got some bleach at the Publix and we put these out on our deck, uh, my dad's timeshare, and I put them in bleach water and this is what we ended up with. And I was so excited and they were kind of stinky. And my dad wasn't a real big fan of having this on his lanai, but really neat things that I had never found before. Sea biscuits and a domino and lots of sponges and sea urchins. Uh, we found goggles and, and big true tulips and it was just really exciting for us. So we started going back often, probably about once a month. And I wanted to show you some of the places that we've hit because they're all a little different. Each island in the Keys is something different to offer. So we try to visit new places each time. It's not the same place that produces the best every time we're there. So this is around Bahia Honda State Park, which remember is protected. But then uh, this tree here on the first picture is at the south of the rail bridge, which is the rail bridge is in the last picture. That's a neat little area to pull over uh, just right off the side of the road on Highway 1 and get out and look. It's very similar with the rocks and the um, shallow water and the shells get caught in the water there. So you can find really neat things without having to get down in the water and snorkel and get wet. So I enjoy not having to get fully uh, submersed in water to look for my shells. Uh, this one is called the horseshoe and I don't have an aerial view of it, but it's man-made and it's an actual U shape and the top is open into the Gulf of Mexico. I believe it's on Scout Key. And they have snorkeling and scuba diving classes that they offer here. And you'll see a lot of um, scuba divers with their gear on getting into the water. Um, I was told that there's an ambulance that's submerged like 20 feet down. I haven't seen it because it's not visible from the top. But we like to get in there and look around for all kinds of fun stuff. Most of the stuff here is alive, but it's neat to see where the breeding is. And you can see, um, I, I was told, and I haven't seen this, but I was told there was a lot of cowries here at one point that they were all alive on one of the walls, but I, I didn't see the alive cowries. So still looking for those, but Dominic found this alive uh, sea star and Olivia Nicholas can get in there. It's pretty shallow around the edges and you can walk at low tide around all of the edges except for the middle where it doesn't connect towards the, the opposite side of the beach. And then there's Ohio Key, which is also called Sunshine Key. And there is a RV park there on the one side. And there's bridge, which is this, um, not the seven mile bridge, but it's highway one. And you can go under it to look for shells on both sides. So this is a lot of where the rocks are, where you can find things too. Um, there's left of the bridge is on the left side and right of the bridge is on the right side in this picture. And then Missouri Key is very good too. It's north of Ohio Key, very rocky and the rocks are very sharp, but at low tide, it's really nice. You can, it, you can walk out really far to look for shells and a lot of alive things there too, but after a storm or if there's really hot water or something that the shells don't make it, it's a good place to find a good wash up after you know, some sort of event where the shells didn't, didn't do well. This sea urchin on the right, I really, really liked and it didn't make it home with us, but I'm glad I got the picture of it beforehand, but very heartbreaking that it didn't make it home. So I wanted to show you some of the things that we find that we just take pictures of and leave because it's very educational for the kids, very beautiful to look at, breaks my heart that I can't take them home, but I'm glad that they're still there to make more. So on the left side, we have uh, our first big queen conch that we found. And you can see at the bottom of the picture, you can see the animal still in there. And I was very excited to learn that they're spotted. I had no idea that they inside that they were like a tan color and black spotted. In the middle there is one of the cushioned sea stars or Bahamian sea stars. 
really neat to see and feel on the bottom of your hand that they the cilia moves underneath your hand, but um, exciting to see. The blue is the Portuguese man of war, which we haven't gotten stung there, but my youngest flipped one onto a sister at Dania. So we're well aware of how dangerous those are. So we saw one floating by us and we had to take a picture. And in the bottom right, I have a flamingo tongue that's alive. And we rescued it because it was on dry land up on an island, but we put it back in the water. There wouldn't be a benefit to keeping it because the beautiful part is what's alive. So if it was no longer alive, then it wouldn't be as beautiful as it is in that picture. So hopefully that lived to see another day. We didn't get to find out what happened. Same, same flamingo tongue as the first picture, but the other side. And it was just gorgeous. It's the only one I had ever seen uh, alive. And in the bottom left is a alive sea urchin with, uh, I guess I called it a carrier urchin because it had shells attached to the top. In the middle, we have a true tulip, which most of you know from the West Coast. And in the upper right is a pen shell. So the pen shells there are pink and beautiful and real small and kind of see-through. So they're different than the ones that we see on Sanibel. And I've not seen any that are not alive. All of them that I have seen are thriving and stick straight up out of the water. And then on the bottom right is a vase shell. And I think the vase shell is probably one of the most common finds that I see there. All of the majority of them are alive. It's very rare to find one that's empty. So I'm not sure what's happening to all the vase shells, but they're beautiful to see and they're a purple color inside. So we just, I don't even flip them over anymore because 99% of the time they're alive. And so here's what we find that are empty or dead that we could take if we wanted. The upper left-hand side are the deer cowries that I absolutely love. And when Dominic found these five, he went out snorkeling and came back and said he didn't find anything and gave me a rock. And then he pulled in his other pocket and he had five deer cowries in his pocket. So he thought he was really funny. I yelled at him. <laughs> so for teasing his mom. And then on the bottom are the horseshoe crabs that it must have been some sort of storm because I don't normally see them there, but these all probably 10 more were all together on an island that we don't normally visit very often. I don't know if it just hadn't been visited lately or if, if something was going on from a storm. In the middle is hawkwing conks, beautiful colors. They're fresh dead. They smelled horrible. And if you picked them up, black goo was coming out the middle of them. We found these in July and the water was almost too hot to stand in. So I think that led to the death of these beautiful conks. So I felt really bad, but I was really excited to be able to take some home instead of just admiring them and putting them back. So these are in our collection at home now. And then on the upper right, we have a really neat, I think it's called a sea heart. It looks like a puffy sea biscuit, but it has a different face on it. I absolutely loved this, but it was breaking when we found it and it didn't make it all the way home with us, but it's huge and it was beautiful. And, and I'm disappointed that I don't still have that in my collection. And then another uh, Janthinas are washed up after the storms. And then these are mostly from that last time we went there in September. I found my first queen conch that was empty. I had not had one. Everyone I turn over was alive and well, and I'm happy for them, but I didn't get to put it in my collection until that one right there was my first one. I had been looking for a angular triton and that had been highest on my bucket list. And I finally found one, but we were also snorkeling for the first time there in September. It was warm enough to snorkel and it was a low tide. So I think those uh, lended very well to finding things that were more unusual that we hadn't seen washed up before. And the top, we have another queen conch roller, but it was a really large one. And the bottom uh, middle is a giant ton, but a smaller one than a milk conch on the right. And more things that we find empty are the partridge tons on the left. And the middle is a telon that Olivia found. And on the right is one of Dominic's uh, first cowrie shells that he found. So some of the scenery that we see while we're there uh, over to the left is um, in the middle keys. I think it was around Almorada that we saw that. The top one is Dominic snorkeling off of uh, in between Ohio Key and Bahia Honda Key. And the middle bottom is the rail bridge with a sunset, which is absolutely gorgeous. If you can get it timed just right, you can see the sun setting right through the, the opening of the rail bridge. And the upper right is 
the pink roseate spoonbills, which I don't normally see down there. And that was the first two that I had seen before. I normally see them on Sanibel in the bottom are, are my kids sitting in a grass bed in the water. Much different than being in Ohio in the, in the cold. So here's some of the kids having fun and, and having a good time with the shells that they find. And they're very excited about what they find. So Olivia, you know, finds a queen conch that's alive and wants to show me, but puts it back gently. And Nicholas's true tulip was alive, but his uh, sea bean, sea heart, he got to keep. And so, you know, it's, it's just really fun for them to be able to see nature and to, to get out and get in the water and see what's going on. And he, they learned all the names of the shells. If you ask them any of the names, they know what it is, or they know it's different and neat and it's special. And we should probably look into to see what it is. So exciting for them and for me to be able to teach that to them. So here's some of our collections of what we found in the last two years of uh, being down in the Keys. You can see our biscuits turned out much better than they are when we find them. They're no longer green and mucky. And uh, I think we have a total of three of the big queen conks now that we found. And the, a lot of the little rollers and a lot of the hawk wings and um, milk conks. I don't think there's a milk conch picture in there, but um, a lot of the milk conks and Dominic's armful of calories, which I absolutely love. And I've only found one, but Dominic is yeah, the hero in finding all of those for his mom. And here's some other, uh, those are the two queen conks that we found uh, together. And th the last time we were there, the, you can see the first one, two, three, four, five, six of the queen conks up top are pretty beat up and uh, uh, like pitted holes in them. But the, the last two are the really good ones that we were excited about. I found one and Olivia found one. And uh, we find some coral there. We found some milk conks, hawk wings, sea glass, and lots of the vase shells, the sea whips, and the sea fans. There's quite a few of those there also. So what questions does anybody have for me? First question is, how far is it to the Middle Keys? Um, it takes me about four and a half hours to get there each way. What is your favorite place to snorkel? Uh, we really like the horseshoe because it's closed off from most of like sharks and things like that with, the, with having the kids in the water. I get a little worried about what else is in there with us but I, I feel pretty safe with them being there because there's just one little opening at the top versus just kind of out in the open. Uh, so we really like the horseshoe, which is on Scout Key. Can you tell us more about CITES and what shells can and cannot be taken in the Keys? It's uh, most of the um, regulations are for if they're alive and if they're empty, you can take them as long as they're not in a protected area, which would be the the state parks, you're not allowed to take them, it's posted, but the other places, if it's long as it's empty, you can take them. And I looked online um, to see what the regulations are, and that is the only regulation is as long as it's empty and not in a protected area, you can take them. Uh, the keys are protected for fish, but they're not protected for the shell parts. Um, I just know, I looked up the regulations on it, and it's C-I-T-E-S. And it's what can and cannot be taken to the United States or what can be imported or not imported. So uh, looking at the regulations for the keys, as long as they're, they're not occupied, you can take them um, and not in the areas that it's de designated that you cannot. But if they're empty, you can. And then you also can get a um, fishing license for certain species for consuming them if anything is um, to be consumed for eating, such as I think they have the coquinas and things like that, where you can consume certain amounts per visit per day. Diane asks, if you were searching on the bay side or the ocean side of Bahia Honda, she had been there and hadn't found much snorkeling. That's that's the one that we that we didn't find anything um, the first time we had gone. So we we checked out both sides, but I prefer at the bottom of the rail bridge, which is basically the next key down, but it's attached with the bridge from Bahia Honda. And that area, it seems to be better for snorkeling than the actual park. I don't go inside the park anymore. Um, can you take sand dollars from the beach there? You can take sand dollars. Um, I don't find sand dollars as much as I find the sea biscuits, but as long as they're not alive, you can take them. Thank you.
You're welcome. When are you taking us all for a field trip? I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> we just need to get question. it. We need to warm up a little bit because it's cold yes. there. Um, Cherie, yes, there's roadside parking. I just get out and and stop where I see water and explore. We just pull over to the side of the road and park and get out and get our uh, walking stick and bucket and just see what we can find. So we just, there's no parking spaces. Are there usually other people there? It looks like when you're Very there. Few. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's some boaters. Um, there's some people that are staying at the RV resort that will kayak around different islands. Um, but there are very few people there. So I feel pretty safe going there in the pandemic too, that we could social distance and in a beautiful area and, and still have a good time. We have a question around what tide chart you've been using or can uh, sure. I go I go on my phone and it is called tides. This doesn't really seem real helpful. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just blue and it's called tides. It's got a little wave. Amanda, what, what area, what do you use for the location? Like Punti Bell for Sanibel, um, what, what are you looking at? Um, depending on where I'm gonna go, there's a channel in between each key. So between Ohio and Missouri key, it says Ohio, Missouri channel. And then between, um, oh, yeah, and they're all similar. So, um, and then Scout key has one and Bahia Honda has one. So it just depends on what we wanna try out at that time. We go and look that area and they're very similar. So we can, we can hit multiple islands but through there if the one's a bust. Are there places to stay in that area? I know you usually go back and forth in the same day. I do. Um, I found that there are three or four big chain hotels on Marathon, which is you know just above the seven mile bridge. I, but they're usually like $250 a night. Almost, almost all of them are. So we found some smaller ones that we have stayed at and I am not a real big fan of so far. So I'm going to continue looking, but I, yeah, I have been driving there and back in the same day. Amanda, I had a question. Sure. We've been down snorkeling and diving in the Keys uh, off and on over the years. And especially in the summer, we have a lot of problems with being stung with sea nettles or with jellyfish. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it depends on the weather, the, the time of year, but have you found that to be a problem? I never did until uh, this past September. That was the first time that we had been stung by the upside down jellyfish. Is that the sea nettles? Right. Yeah. So we had seen quite a few of those and all of us were stung and it, it lasted a couple seconds. And I, I always carry the meat tenderizer with me and the vinegar, but we were out in the water when it happened. And I actually got one in the face. Yes. And I, yeah. Yep. It, it was not fun. It doesn't um, feel good. No, no, it was. And I, you know, I, I figured I would probably wait to go back for a little while. It's the first time I had ever run into that. Okay. Is that only in the hot weather you would anticipate that? I had never seen it before, although I hadn't been snorkeling until recently. So normally if I'm just walking, I, I wasn't running into it. But since I started snorkeling to see, you know, I wanted to branch out and find different things such as the angular triton that I was looking for. Um, that's when I started snorkeling and that's when I started noticing them, uh, the sting. That, Karen, that's when we've had most of, most of the stings has been in the summer. Oh, and always, always, always bring a dive flag when you're snorkeling there because the, the cops will pull over off the side of the road and make you come out and give you a ticket. I'm sorry, what? Always bring a what? A dive flag. So a like dive a, flag. Mm -hmm, a snorkeling okay. flag. I have a quick question before she oh, goes. Go do, you, do, you find, do you find any um, fossils like shark's teeth and things like that? I have not. And my youngest is a shark tooth magnet. He finds them over in Boca and sometimes on Dania, but we have not found them in the Keys. At least not yet. I figured they're, they're younger and closer to the ground so they can see better things than I can. So that's why I bring them along. They're, uh, they're really good at that stuff. That was very fun, Amanda. Thank you so much for Thank doing you. it. I appreciate it. I put my email address and my Instagram on there. If anybody's interested in contacting me, they have any questions, I'd be happy to assist. That was a great presentation. That was a great presentation, Amanda. Thank you so much. Yeah.